Hey, yo, you're listening to Edge Coach Quip, featuring our very own edge coaches and community, dropping knowledge nuggets to fuel your day. Hello there. Welcome to Coach Quip. This is episode 97. I'm Coach Robin. I'm Coach Chris. And today we're talking about pacing on the run. So first up, how do you know your paces, right? We get this a lot, whether it's a new runner, an intermediate runner, honestly, even sometimes an intermediate advanced runner, because it's it can be very fluid depending on where your fitness is, what you're chasing distance-wise. Is it new? Is it something you've done before? Boils down to two easy steps. The first one is run a benchmark. What's a benchmark? It can be any race or run where you run your potential. So I wouldn't do this when it's super hot. We're going to have a coach quip on heat in the very next episode, so make sure to look for it. But do it where you can run a one mile, 5K, 10K, half marathon, if you're training for a marathon so that you are like, yeah, I left it all out there. I feel like I did a good job. And that snapshot is going to serve as your benchmark. The second thing you're going to do with that benchmark is going to be using a a pace calculator. So there are a lot of them out there. Honestly, any of them seem okay. So the most popular ones I think are VDOT and McMillan. I know that here at Edge, we use a lot of McMillan uh, pace calculators. That is going to then extrapolate from that first benchmark all of your other paces. So if you benchmark a 5k, it's going to give you a 10k half marathon, mile marathon pace card. And then ta-da, you can (laughs) plug in your personal paces for your personal pace card. And then you have it. One more thing before we go to bonus miles, benchmark testing really can be done every four to eight weeks. Um, As long as your training isn't crazy and you feel good and you feel fresh and being able to do it, they can be done fairly frequently throughout a training season and they can also sub out a a speed run or a tempo run so that you're not just racing on the weekend, right? You can swap Mm -hmm. those in and out so they become kind of that functional fitness zone. So get out there with some people, find a course or find a race, and we have tons more tips in the bonus miles on finding your paces and how to actually apply them to your training. So stick around. All right, welcome back to the bonus miles. I'm sitting here melting, but today we're talking about pace groups and uh, we're gonna start off with why do pace groups exist? So pace groups essentially exist so you can train up to your potential. Uh, This means training with other people at a similar fitness level. And when we do that, we can really hold each other accountable and push ourselves as well as stay on track. So there's, we've talked in a lot of our episodes have had this through line talking about the benefits of training with other people. We've talked about social recovery. We've talked about the draft horse effect. Um, All of this, when we are training with other folks, we are able to level up and really stack those bricks. I love the draft draft horse effect story. So can you, I think we should just pull it in here again. If folks missed it in the last episode that we talked about it. What is the draft horse effect? The draft horse effect, I always like to say too, it came from a discussion with one of the Bowerman babes about why does, why does she like training with the team? And she very succinctly pulled this quote out of a book. And then I bought the book to make sure the quote was there and it is. <laughs> so as a single draft horse, so these are horses that are trained to pull things, um, they can pull up at about 4,000 pounds. So one horse, I am a horse, I can pull up 4,000 pounds. If Coach Chris is a horse and I'm a horse and we go together, instantly we can pull 16,000 pounds together. So just by being side by side, we are able to pull two times the load that you would think we'd be able to do. If we train together, we can actually train to pull up to 32,000 pounds. So we are able to exponentially do better, smarter, more efficient work just by training side by side. I love, I love that I laugh at that. I'm like I'm like, my mind is blown every time you say it. And even when I listened to it back on the last time that we talked about it, the, the math just doesn't math, but it also makes a lot of sense because in the past episode, we talked about people's perceptions of, uh, of a bar being heavy, so like lifting a weight, and if they were side by side with a friend. It's exactly the same. It, it's exactly the same. If they were side by side with a friend, picking up that bar seemed easier. Walking up to a hill, if they were next to a friend, it seemed like a less steep incline and like it'd be less of a challenge versus being with a stranger. So. This is the, you know, we talk about the sweat bond here at Edge, and, and this is the perfect example of, of how that magic happens when you train with other people. It is, it is just that, it's exactly magic. Yep. And so how do you know your pace group? Um, at Edge, we have pace cards, 
But there are a lot of different ways that you can figure out, we talked about them in the, in the first part of this episode, how to figure out what your pacing might be, but then how do you apply that to a group? So there's speed monsters and endurance monsters. So there are people- What are you? Are, I think I'm a combo. Okay, there I, are combos out there. I think I'm a combo because I really enjoy racing long, and so I've done the iron distances, the ultra races, but I also excel in the draft legal short course. Yes, and that's so, true. And so, yeah. I, He's I like a unicorn, that. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't try to get me in that half marathon 10K range. That is not the my... The middle part is not your middle part is not my sweet spot. Um, but yeah, so I've found that depending on my training, you know, and the specificity of your training really makes a difference, but I could go on either end. Um, so we have speed monsters, we have endurance monsters, we have combo people, and you know, it's possible that those... Uh, parts of your training might not line up evenly as what McMillan's pace calculator says or on a straight line of what your pace is could potentially be based on your benchmark. All right, so an example of knowing your your pace group and then also kind of splitting two different ones. So just pretend, again, going, we're going to hit some examples up a lot, but sub two hour half marathon is a pretty common like robust group to, to rock. So that for us would be a true kind of orange orange color band on our on our pace chart. So let's say that you feel really good doing orange for endurance. This is, I'm speaking from personal reference here. Um, I, am, I am an endurance monster. So I feel really good when I do my workouts in orange, but I am really not keeping up when it comes to speed. In that case, you would drop down, for us it's a color, to red. Um, so that you can effectively feel really good at that red pace group before trying to bubble up again. Mm -hmm. I like to do it, like if once you start feeling good at red, you can start on the back half of a workout, bubble up, and then all of a sudden the back three quarters, and then all of a sudden you can do all of your speed runs at orange, which used to be your weakness, but is now your strength, and that is what we call progress. Yes, the pace group that we see when we do that first benchmark and we jump into our 16-week training plan for a marathon, for example, might not be the pace group that, sure. we, that we want to be in for our end goal. So how do we, how do we work with that? How do you level up? Yeah. So that's a, that's a great question. So how do we level up pace groups, right? Because our, when we enter into a season, to your point, we're at kind of a current level of fitness. How do you level up to your goal pace, right? The honest answer is you dance on the line. So mm -hmm. if you are truly, let's say you're a sub two hour marathoner on our chart, that would put you perfectly in the orange band. You will, whenever you feel great, um, dance on that orange line. By doing that, you're going to increase the aerobic capacity that you're able to do on that orange line. And eventually you will stack enough bricks that you can level up to yellow so that you're looking more at like the low 150s, let's say, for, for a half marathon. You'll know though when you need to level up, either you've done a benchmark and you proved a new pace card, mm -hmm. right? Or when you start to feel that more than a third of your workouts are feeling really good. Remember that rule of thirds that we've talked about as well? We've had this sewn into many an episode. When you are training and you know that you're doing things to your potential, a third of your workouts should feel great, a third of them should feel okay, and a third of them should feel like garbage. So, not garbage, but it should feel not great. So, when you notice that like a third or, or half or even over half of your workouts start to be, you're doing them handedly, especially in a build phase, mm -hmm. that is time, even without a benchmark, that I would start to look into leaning into a pace group that's one harder than what you've been doing. So, when you say dancing on the line, though, what, what, what could that actually look like? Say, say somebody has uh, eight reps of 400 meters in, in a speed workout. What would dancing on the line look like? Yeah, dancing on the line is really where, if that's eight 400s at, let's say, 5K pace, and I've, I've been rocking that orange color band, which on this for 5K would be an 820 pace. Mm -hmm. I am hitting the 820 every single time, maybe even going past that 820 pace every single time by working within that band, our body becomes really, really good at working in the band, right? Just like if you practice violin for you know an hour a day, you start to stack those bricks and all of a sudden you can play harder pieces. Yep. It's exactly the same. By doing the work on that band and dancing on that line of what that current pace card is, you are by nature going to be able to level up. I, I never imagined a violin reference. In I was school. a violinist. Were you? Yes. I did not know. <laughs> make that a fun fact. <laughs> it should be. And then we'll see if people are listening. <laughs>
All right, so to wrap us up here, let's talk about a couple of pace group secrets. So how can you really utilize the power of a pace group? The first is uh, identify a pace master in the group. So somebody who's gonna take the lead that day, a pace group leader for that workout, and they can really be in charge of making sure that nobody goes past them on the pace. So keeping at the front of the line and then also keeping track of time. So if you're running timed intervals, for example, that person can really be the person on the watch which frees up the rest of the people in the pace group to just run and not be running with their eyes on their wrists. There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> that runs like that? That just knows everything. <laughs> like they're a metronome. Identify that person and put them in the front. Exactly, yep. But you can also switch off and, and rotate that responsibility around the group as well, which is really awesome because it does give that feeling of uh, having ownership over the, the progress and the success of the group and of the workout, which everybody loves that responsibility. Actually, maybe not everybody loves that responsibility. That might be... But they all need to learn to pace. They all need to learn to pace, so everybody should take on that role at some point. Um, challenge yourself if that doesn't feel like a role that you would willingly step into. Uh, the other thing would be to meet up on easy days. So really use the power of the community in that pace group we love using the pace groups for the speed work, but on those easy and recovery days, you can get a ton of benefits from being with those people and really building that bond, especially if you're gonna race with them. Yes. So if you know that you're all working towards the same marathon, working out in the speed workouts, the long runs, the easy runs, recovery runs, as much as you can is really gonna make that group cohesion. So on race day, you're gonna pack up and everybody's gonna be working towards their goals. All right, so to recap, how do you know your paces? You're gonna benchmark and use a calculator. Why do they exist? To help everybody with their accountability, to stay on their paces, and to increase your fitness. How do you know your pace group? Figure out if you're a speed or endurance monster and then use your charts. How do you level up your paces? Either straddle the line or set those benchmarks at regular intervals, do your regular speed work, and try to hit those benchmarks so that you can level up. And last but not least, we got some secrets. We're gonna have you go back and listen to those again. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for listening to Coach Quip, original music performed by Mend. Follow us online on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Edge Athlete Lounge. Our podcast lives in the blog section of our website. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And you can check out the show notes for additional ways to contact us. Ready, set, Onward we go.